Thai police say Israeli diplomats were the target of a group of Iranians arrested after prematurely setting off explosives in Bangkok. Claims are expected to further fuel anti-Iranian rhetoric that Tel Aviv has ratcheted up after bomb attacks targeted Israelis in Georgia and India. Artiz Irina Galushka reports. It seems like the battle drones are, are growing louder and louder, with Israel continuing to issue this really harsh rhetoric towards Iran, accusing them essentially of, of terrorizing the entire world community. Uh, just today there was a harsh statement from Tel Aviv, which called to impose paralyzing sanctions on Tehran. All this while Iran has just made it clear that they are indeed ready to sit down for talks, to continue talks on its nuclear program. But the Prime Minister of Israel has made a statement saying that Iranian aggression should be stopped. So, the, of course, that brings forth many fears that the military confrontation with Iran is imminent. And nowhere are these fears more prominent than in Israel. The Muslim Brotherhood said that they are going to, that they might uh, reconsider the peace accord, which they do have with Israel in response to U.S. Uh, pressure in regards with the NGO scandal. So a lot of people in Israel primarily are thinking that perhaps Israel should stop the rhetoric it does carry on right now and focus on its internal problems and the problems on its borders rather than really push forth with this aggressive rhetoric towards Iran. And another obstacle for Israel could come from Egypt as the Muslim Brotherhood threatens to reconsider Cairo's peace treaty with Tel Aviv. For more on where this could lead, I'm joined by Yaakov Lapin, a reporter for the Jerusalem Post. So how do you understand this reconsider term? What are the steps behind it and do you think it could lead to another confrontation between Israel and Egypt? Well, I think ever since the Muslim Brotherhood came to power through the elections, it became quite clear that Egyptian-Israeli relations would not be the same as they were before. Um, we have to remember that the Muslim Brotherhood, in its ideology, believes that the peace treaty with Israel is a bad thing, it's a negative thing, and in their ideological core, they would like to see it one day go away. However, they're restrained by some real politic um, factors and they're unable to uh, abolish the treaty so they're certainly going to look for ways to downgrade it gradually and perhaps one day abolish it altogether. Now Israel is acting like a small coin in the latest round of the US Egyptian tensions. Is peace with Israel so unimportant for Egypt or they just don't believe they have to put its threat into action? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to repeat the question. I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. That's okay. Uh, do you think that uh, the Egyptians are willing to uh, use kind of Israel in, in, in this way as kind of like a bargaining chip in this game between tensions between Egypt and the U.S.? Yes, definitely. I think they will try and do that. I think that what we're seeing as well is a game between the um, Egyptian military and the Muslim Brotherhood-led parliament. The military is playing uh, towards this xenophobic, anti-Israeli, anti-American sentiment in order to uh, placate the population. And the Muslim Brotherhood is playing up the same line out of ideological reasons. So we're seeing both of these forces um, the military and the Muslim Brotherhood playing up to this opportunistic xenophobia and each one serving its own interest by doing so. Now the Camp David Accord had made Egypt the first Arab state to officially recognize Israel. How do you think its revision could affect the fragile uh, position of Israel in the region? I think that um, if the peace treaty proves to be something that does not survive the rise of the Islamists to power in Egypt, this will make Israelis think twice and three times and four times before opening up negotiations with other uh, Arab countries in the future. Um, this is one of the pitfalls of um, reaching peace agreements with countries whose regimes are ultimately unstable and could fall one day in the future. Um, so this will have an effect on the entire region and it's certainly not putting most Israelis in a mood to take further risks for peace at this stage. And now the possibility of U.S. aid to Egypt being scrapped led to threats from the Muslim Brotherhood, but at the same time most of the Egyptians oppose the aid, calling it a humiliation. How far do you think that public anger could go? I'm sorry, once more, I'm going to have to ask you to repeat the question. That's okay. Uh, the possibility of U.S. aid being scrapped uh, by Egypt uh, led to threats from the Muslim Brotherhood, but at the same time, most Egyptians oppose U.S. aid to their country, calling it a humiliation. Do you think their uh, voices will lead to uh, more public anger? 
If I understood your question correctly, um, we're talking about voices within Egypt that within are opposed Egypt, to the Muslim opposed, Brotherhood? No, opposed to American aid to the country. Oh, that are opposed to the American aid to the country. Certainly, there are um, many, I think, Egyptians who are opposed to American aid because uh, they see it as uh, interventionalism and an attempt by America to uh, push forward its agenda within Egypt. And I think that these kinds of um, anti-American sentiments are, once again, being encouraged uh, both by the military, by the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, and by the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, each for their own reason. Um, so certainly there are those in Egypt who oppose American aid. They see it as a threat. And I wouldn't be surprised if the United States itself decides to cancel its uh, 1.3, 1.4 billion dollar aid uh, to Egypt in the near future, especially in light of the fact that some 19 American nationals are now under Egyptian arrest um, and uh, have been barred from leaving the country. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see this aid come to an end in the near future. All right. Yakov Lapin, reporter for the Jerusalem Post. Thanks for your insight.